Coach PJ. Today I'm going to take you through one of the most common core exercises, which is the feet anchored sit-up. I'm going to tell you why this is a really ineffective way to train the rectus abdominals, which is what most people are trying to target when they're doing these type of sit-ups. And then I'll give you a few variations of some of my favorite exercises where you can really target the rectus abdominals properly and alleviate the tension and the stress that we're going to put on the low back in this position. So the reason I don't like the feet anchored sit-up, as soon as we anchor our feet into something, this significantly turns on the psoas muscle, the iliopsoas, which crosses the hip. When we turn that muscle on, we're going to lose some of the engagement in the rectus abdominals, which is the muscles we're trying to work anyway. And because the psoas muscles connect to the lumbar spine, we're going to put a ton of tension into the lumbar spine. And you can see this position that Olivia is in already. She has a big arch in her low back, meaning her hips are already anteriorly tilted and dumped forward, and she's getting a ton of tension and compression into her lumbar spine. So she's already in a bad position, and it's going to be ineffective for her to, her to train her rectus abdominals. So just show a couple of normal sit-ups here. And there's a lot of variations we can have here. We could make it way worse and add a rotation at the top. Now we're talking about compression and rotation on the lumbar spine. So you're just going to be deteriorating your spine. You can relax. I don't want you to deteriorate your spine anymore. So extremely ineffective way to train the abdominals and really dangerous and a really bad position for the lumbar spine. So anytime we're putting our feet anchored in for a sit-up, there may be one or two times that I would ever use this for a high-level athlete, but that would be a very different scenario. Most of the time, this is gonna be a month, an ineffective way to train the abdominals, and I'm gonna show you some more effective ways to train them and, uh, and safer ways to train them right now. To replace those feet anchored sit-ups and really isolate and target the rectus abdominals a lot better, I'm gonna give you two exercise variations that we can use. One of them is gonna be the McGill Crunch. For this one, Olivia's got her feet flat on the floor. She's got her tailbone tucked, so her low back's nice and flat, so her tailbone is tucked off the floor. And then she's got her hands right up over her chest, and then all she's gonna do is a very small crunch, reaching her hands up and back, like she was trying to slide them up a wall behind her. And I'm gonna give her a cue here to reach up and back. So go ahead and crunch up, and keep your eyes up on your hands. So a very small crunch, and she's just getting her shoulder blades slightly off the ground. So we're not getting much, if any, movement at the lumbar spine. We're just getting a very small crunch, but a ton of engagement in the rectus abdominal. So go ahead and crunch up and hold. And if you can see, she's shaking a lot. We can relax. She's shaking a lot in that position because we're isolating the rectus abdominals to do the work. We're getting intense contractions there, and we're getting no uh, flexion, no movement, and no uh, torque at the lumbar spine. So it's a much safer exercise for the lumbar spine and better because we have no involvement in the psoas muscles because our feet aren't anchored into anything. Another variation that we can use, now I could add a load to that one. I typically for that one will just add volume. So we'll do more reps or more sets or more time under tension. But another great variation that we can use is gonna be a jackknife. So similar position setup. the most important thing here is that she keeps her tailbone tucked and her low back flat. As long as she maintains that position, anything else that we're doing is just to challenge that position. So keep that in mind. It's not to straighten your arms and legs, it's to challenge that stable base position because that's what my abdominals are keeping locked in. So she's got the kettlebell just above her chest with her arms bent, her knees are bent 90 degrees. And then the first one she's gonna do, keeping her knees bent, She's just gonna slowly start to bring the kettlebell overhead. So keep the knees in place. Only as far as she can go without losing tension here. Maybe she can reach it all the way overhead. Maybe she only gets halfway. It doesn't really matter because the goal is maintaining this position. Then if she needs to make it more challenging, she can extend the kettlebell as she extends her knees a little bit, pausing there. As soon as she feels like she starts to lose tension and this back starts to arch, she'll pause and come back in. So it doesn't matter how far the range of motion is, that's how we increase the difficulty of the exercise. And she's just gonna go nice and slow and get as many reps as she needs to really fatigue the muscles of the rectus abdominals. And again, we're taking out a lot of the extra work of the psoas and the tension on the lumbar spine. You can relax. So those are two of my favorite replacements to train the rectus abdominals. 
that are much better than anything you're gonna do with your feet anchored in if you're doing sit-ups trying to train your abs.